Let's get a fire going. It's um, it's not too bad today. Sorry, just it's always good, isn't it? We just think, oh yeah, a fire, and then your mind goes blank, and then you start forgetting what it is you're gonna say. I mean, what is there to say? It's like that. I'm doing the bit where I, I poke all the ashes through so that the fire can breathe. And then I'm going to put things on the fire to breathe. And I'll show you some of those things in a minute. It's going to be the usual suspects of wood, fire lighters, logs, coal. But then later on, I'll be doing a bit extra. I've been uh, I've been meaning to go to the tip um, recently, as so I've got some rubbish which needs um, getting rid of and broken furniture and what have you. Uh, but recently, all the tips near me have started charging a fee. I've heard as much as one pound fifty per piece of uh, timber, and then I thought to myself. What if I just went there and said to the chaps, Look, I'm not here to dump anything, I'm just waiting for people to come with bits of timber, and then rather than them paying you pound fifty to take them away and stick them in the landfill, they give them to me and I, I take them home and I, I burn them. So it seems that our local council wishes to encourage fly tipping, by charging people a fee per item to get rid of the rubbish. And uh, apparently, according to the reviews, this hasn't been a local policy. This has been enacted from on high uh, in a policy to make uh, recycling and rubbish disposal um, more unfriendly so that more fly tipping occurs. Because that's clearly what the government's... Um, uh, concern is all local governments concern maybe it's the councils going well we're bankrupt and one of the things you do when you're bankrupt is to encourage people to go fly tipping because then you can charge people to go and clean it up i i don't know really i, I would say it's it's a counterintuitive um uh counterintuitive it's a counterproductive process now some of you more astute um, listeners might say, but Hobbit, don't you pay council tax? And shouldn't council tax pay for services like uh, getting rid of the rubbish? Now, there are arguments to be made that the reason you pay council tax is that certain services like uh, keeping the roads free of potholes and taking away the rubbish are done. And it's it's why people engage in a social contract where you agree to pay taxes and in exchange for paying taxes, you expect to get services. But it seems these days the um, the uh, the taxes are going on things which are not mending roads or taking away rubbish. So uh, I don't know. Do not. Oh. Do you know in America they actually use this stuff as a building material and they say it's 50% cheaper than using timber? And we claim one of the advantages of it, apart from being very insulating, is it's fire resistant. Uh huh. Look at it resisting fire. <laughs> Why, why can't... Now, I'm not a builder. So if you are a builder, or even if you're not, and you've just got an opinion on, on building, can you explain to me why this stuff is a superior material to, say, bricks, or stone, or cob, or wood? Can, can you tell me why why foam is, is, a, is a superior material to that? Because... Uh, or concrete? Concrete's another material... I know, I know people say, oh, well, it's it's not as insulating as, as foam, but 
it's durable and in the case of something like uh, um, concrete well if you made the walls thicker th that would surely be insulating I even saw a thing um, someone saying that well they like building using sandbags and then they they put a sand clay render on top of the sandbags because it's easier than bricklaying and I think I understand it he, he goes in to a sandy field fills the bags with sand and then he puts the sandbags one on top of one another and then he just uh, gets um, I want to say it's like a sledgehammer but it's got a flat surface and he just uses it to a mallet, there we go, he uses a mallet to tamp them all down so that they're an even layer and then he puts another layer of them on my bread's gone mouldy so uh, that's going to be another piece of uh, fuel for the fire and I've got no logs so I should have to go and fix that post haste but anyway yeah Local councils decided that, actually, no, um, you're going to have to pay a, a fee for timber, furniture, and anything else which won't fit in the bin. And we pay council tax. So, um, part of me is almost tempted to just go there and say, well, look, um, I will um, just stand here, got my picnic, got my packed lunch... And anybody that's got any bits of timber, I'll just say, I'll take that off of you. No charge. Just stick it in my car. <laughs> uh, yep. Cool. All right. Now, I'm, I'm trying to be polite about this, but... I'm a bit annoyed at the idea that, in addition to paying council tax, you have to pay a fee on top of the council tax. And I think to myself, why was this not done before? And why is it being done now? And one could argue, ah, well, you see, you're coming to the end of a functioning civilization in England. So this is in the... Uh, gutting everything stage and squeezing the peasants for all that they're worth and it's um it's not very nice I, I grew up in an England where these things were paid for with taxes and in fact we had a I think we had a more progressive England and a fairer England, the one I grew up in, because I was just towards the tail end where, in order to go to university, you would have to uh, qualify in terms of your exams. Oh, and that's the other thing as well. In order to get a qualifying mark, you'd have to sit an exam and not do endless coursework, which seems to favour women over men. For whatever reason... Women are quite happy to do endless coursework. Men prefer to do exams. They use the excuse of, oh, well, people get nervous in an exam. And I thought, and? I mean, there are many times when, when I, I'm nervous, but I'm still able to perform. And I think it, it's, it's... Well, anyway. Uh, it used to be understood that you would not pay tuition fees because you see it was an investment it was an investment in higher skills it was the understanding of if you're going to get a degree no matter what the degree is in you do not have to pay uh, tuition fees um, good luck have fun chances are as a degree holder you will get a more lucrative career You'll be more richly financially rewarded, and as a consequence, you can afford to pay more taxes because you are uh, you you are more wealthy. 
you, you earn more money, you're richer. Um, that was one of the things which was, see, which I think is quite forward thinking, you see. Like the idea of um, when rubbish is taken away or potholes amended, you don't pay then, it's just in a mutual fund called the council tax. And the council will use it to maintain things in your local area, which is like a good idea because rather than having warlords and having everything privatised with toll roads and private refuse collection, you have to pay a fee to use these at the point of service. It's an idea of, well, this is mutually beneficial. Why not we just have a council and we pay into a collective fee and the collective fee can be used to pay for all these services which everybody needs. And then because we're centralising this, we can we can endure a um, we can enjoy a com a economy of scale. Um, there are some arguments to be made that while well, competition breeds innovation and and benefits the consumer, but I would say in the case of roads, rails, water, maybe even telecommunications, it it helps to have a central planned economy um, where you can benefit of economies of scale. Uh, I. I, I think there's probably room to go somewhere in the middle with this, but I don't think it's right that people pay tuition fees. And I don't think it's right that in these council-run tips, you have to pay a, a service fee for each item of refuse that's dumped. I mean, I'm not encouraging people to break the law, but I can understand why some are willing to take the risk of fly-tipping because there's a chance you might have to pay a fine but if you go to the tip you're guaranteed to pay a fine so which one is better um obviously the one that's better is that you take all your refuse to the proper facility where it can be safely disposed of and not be an eyesore but that's the world we live in now and it's not a better world and I think a lot of people are annoyed about this. Are you annoyed about the way the world is? I'd like to hear your comments. I'd like to hear your opinions. Although do bear in mind if you're in Canada and you, you spout the wrong opinions, um, you will be arrested because it will be an offence to um, have the wrong opinions in Canada if the new free speech law comes into effect. I, I don't know the ins and outs of it. Um, Canadian politics doesn't affect me, so um, but it is something I'm I'm aware of. And if if you are Canadian, I I would ask you to say that you have no opinion one way or another, because uh, the government says so. Anyway, I've got a fire going. It's too bad I can't burn aluminium in a fire. Well, I can burn aluminium. It's too bad I can't burn steel in a fire. And that I can't put large bulky items in it because if I could turn everything into ash, so much the better. Uh, they still pick up uh, dust from a dustbin. Toodle pip.